imagine we had a variable, let's say x, and it took the following values. We could represent these on a number line like this. We can also mark on the mean x bar, which is equal to 6 for this set of numbers. Now let's imagine we create a new variable, let's say y. And to create y, we're going to add on 20 to all of the x values. So for the first x value of 2, we add 20 to this to get 22. The next x value is 4, so we add 20 to this to get 24. And then we continue to add on 20 to all of the x values. If we look at a visual representation of what we've just done, we take the x values, we add 20 to them, so shift them to the right 20, and this gives you the y values. We can also mark on the mean of these y values y bar, which is 26. To get each of the y values, we added 20 to all of the x values. Notice how to get the new mean y bar, we add 20 to the old mean x bar. When we created this new set of data for the y values, we say the original data has been coded. We coded it using the following formula, y equals x plus 20, because to get the y values, we added 20 to the x values. Notice how the new mean y bar is equal to the old mean x bar plus 20. This is always going to be the case if you code like this. So for instance, if I'd added 30 when coding the data instead of 20, the new mean y bar would be the old mean x bar plus 30. This also works with subtraction as well. So if I'd coded the data by subtracting 7 from all of the values, to find the new mean y bar, I subtract 7 from the old mean x bar. More generally, if we code a set of data by adding a particular value a, the new mean will be equal to the old mean plus a. And also for subtraction, if we code a set of data by subtracting a value a, then we'll work out the new mean by subtracting a from the old mean. So we've seen what happens to the mean if we code data like this, but what happens to the standard deviation? Well, let's take the two sets of data and line them up. We have the x values in red and the y values in green. You can see that the two sets of data are equally spread out, in which case the standard deviation of the red values x, sigma x, will be the same as the standard deviation of the green values sigma y. So we could say that sigma x will still be equal to sigma y. This means that when we code data by adding or subtracting a value, whilst this does affect the mean, it doesn't affect the standard deviation. Now let's look at a slightly different type of coding. Rather than adding or subtracting a value, what happens if we multiply or divide by a value? Let's code this data using the formula y equals 3x. So this time, to get each of the y values, we'll multiply the x values by 3. So for the y values, we'll do 2 multiplied by 3, which is 6, 4 multiplied by 3, 12, 5 multiplied by 3, 15, and then 24 and 33. If we look at a visual representation of what we've just done, we've taken each of the x values and multiplied them by 3. This sort of stretches the data out along the number line. Each of the green values are three times further away from zero as the red values were. So what happens to the mean of this coded data? Well, if you work out the mean of the green values, you'll find that y bar is equal to 18. So to get each of the y values, we multiplied the x values by three. And once again for the mean, to get the new mean, you could just multiply the old mean by three. So we found that the new mean y bar is equal to three lots of the old mean x bar. So if you multiply all of the values by 3, you'll simply multiply the mean by 3. It also doesn't matter which value is used. So if we coded by multiplying by 8, the new mean would be 8 times the old mean. This also works for division. So if we coded by dividing all of the values by 2, the new mean would be half of the old mean. More generally, if we code data by multiplying by a value, let's say b, then the coded mean will be b multiplied by the old mean. And if we code data by dividing by a value, say b, then the coded mean will be the original mean divided by b. But what happens to the standard deviation? Well, if you look at the data this time, you can see the green data is clearly more spread out. Let's take a look at what happened to the greatest value in the original set of values x. So this value here of 11. The difference between this value and the mean is 5. When we coded this value, we got 33. But the difference between this value and the mean is now 15. Since 15 is 3 times greater than 5, we could say that this data point is now 3 times as far away from the mean. And this will actually apply to all of the data points. This means that the coded data is 3 times more spread out than the original data. So the standard deviation will be 3 times greater. So if we code data by multiplying by a number, for example 3, 
then the standard deviation of the coded data, sigma y, will be 3 multiplied by the original standard deviation, sigma x. So when we code data by multiplication, the standard deviation will change. So if the data was coded by multiplying by a number, say b, then the coded standard deviation will be b multiplied by the original standard deviation. The same idea works for division as well. So if we coded the data by dividing by b, then the coded standard deviation will be the original standard deviation divided by b. Let's summarize all of the points we've covered so far. So if we code data by adding on a value, the coded mean will be the original mean plus this value. This doesn't affect the standard deviation though, the standard deviations will remain the same. If we code data by subtracting a value, then the coded mean will be the original mean subtract this value. But once again, the standard deviation will remain the same. However, if we code data by multiplying, for example by b, the coded mean will be b multiplied by the original mean, and the standard deviation will be affected in the same way. The coded standard deviation will be b multiplied by the original standard deviation. And similar if we divide. So if we code data by dividing by b, the coded mean will be the original mean divided by b, and the coded standard deviation will be the original standard deviation divided by b. So it's important to understand here that adding or subtracting does affect the mean, but not the standard deviation, but multiplying and dividing affects both. Let's have a look at how this could be used in an exam question. In this question it says, the attendance, x% percent, is recorded on each day of the school week. And we have the attendance values here. The question says, work out the mean and standard deviation of the attendances. I won't go into detail about how you do this as it's covered in my previous videos, but you should find that the mean x bar is 95.4 and the standard deviation of these values, so we'll call that sigma x since their x values is 2.15. Now for part b, the data is coded using the formula y equals x subtract 90. So this means we'll subtract 90 from each of these attendances. And we need to work out the mean and standard deviation of the coded values, so the mean and standard deviation of the y values. Now here we've coded by subtracting 90. We know that this will affect the mean, but it won't affect the standard deviation. So the new mean, y bar, will be the original mean subtract 90. The original mean we worked out in the previous part at 95.4, so to get the coded mean, we subtract 90 from it. So it will be 5.4. And as we said a moment ago, the standard deviation isn't affected by the subtraction of 90. So the coded standard deviation, sigma y, will be the same as the original standard deviation, sigma x. We've worked out sigma x already, it was 2.15, so the standard deviation of the coded value, sigma y, is also 2.15. Let's try another example. So in this one, the temperature in a city is recorded for 7 days, and we're given some summary information here. We need to work out the mean and standard deviation for the temperatures. So to work out t bar, we would do the sum of t over n. The sum of t is given in the question, that's 189, and n is also in the question, that's 7 days. If we work this out, we'll end up with a mean of 27. Then to work out the standard deviation, we'd use this formula here. The sum of t squared is given in the question, 5131, n is 7 for the 7 days, and t bar we just worked out, that's 27. If you type this into the calculator, you'll find the standard deviation is actually just 2. Now for part b. The data is coded with the formula m equals t subtract 20 over 4. We need to work out the mean and standard deviation of the coded values, so the m values. Now when we've coded this time, we've done two things. We've subtracted 20 and divided by 4. We know that the subtraction of 20 will affect the mean, but it won't affect the standard deviation. We know that the dividing by 4 will affect both the mean and the standard deviation. So let's have a look at how we do the mean first. We want to work out what m bar would be. To do this, we just write out the formula again, and then replace the m with m bar and the t with t bar. So to work out m bar, we'll do t bar subtract 20 divided by 4. We've already worked out t bar in the previous part, that's 27. So m bar will be 27 subtract 20 divided by 4. This will give you an answer of 1.75. Now the standard deviation won't be affected by the subtraction of 20, but it will be affected by the dividing 4. So for the standard deviation of the coded values, sigma m, we would take the original standard deviation, sigma t, and just divide this by 4, without subtracting 20. We have the original standard deviation, sigma t, that's 2, so sigma m 
will be sigma t, which is 2 divided by 4. And 2 divided by 4 is a half, or 0 0.5. Now let's try one more example. So this time the sprint times, t seconds, are recorded for 8 athletes in a 100 meter race. And again we've got some summary information. For part A we need to work out the mean and standard deviation of the sprint times. So we'll do the mean first, so t bar, which is the sum of t over n. The sum of t we've been given in the question, that's 90.32, and n would be the number of athletes, so that's 8. If you work this out, you'll find that t bar, the mean of the times, is equal to 11.29 seconds. Then for the standard deviation, we'll use this formula, because we've been given stt in the question. So we can substitute stt with 7.4996, and n is once again 8 for the 8 athletes. If you type this into a calculator, you'll find that the standard deviation is this value here. Now for part b. The data is coded with the formula r equals 100t subtract 1000. We need to work out the mean and standard deviation of the coded values. So just like in the previous example, we're doing two things when we code here. We're going to multiply by 100 and also subtract 1000. The subtraction of 1000 will affect the mean, but it won't affect the standard deviation. The multiplying by 100 will affect both the mean and the standard deviation. So let's begin with the mean. To do this, copy out the formula again, but replace the r with r bar and the t with t bar. We can then substitute in the values. We know t bar from the previous part, that's 11.29. So to get r bar, we do 100 lots of t bar, so 100 lots of 11.29, subtract 1000. If you type this into the calculator, you'll get 129. Now for the standard deviation. We know the subtracting 1000 isn't going to affect the standard deviation, only the multiplying by 100. So to get the coded standard deviation, sigma r, we'll do 100 multiplied by the original standard deviation, sigma t. We know sigma t from the previous part of the question, so sigma r is equal to 100 lots of 0 0.96822. And this will give you sigma r equals 96.822. Often exam questions will ask you to work backwards from some coded information to work out the original information. Let's have a look at a couple of examples like this. So in this one, Charlie counts the number of sweets, which is S, in eight different packets of sweets. The data is coded with this formula, n is equal to S over 10 subtract 3. And we've been given some information about n. Notice this time it's n rather than S that we're given the information for. We need to work out the mean and standard deviation of the number of sweets. Remembering the number of sweets is given in the question as s. So what we're going to do in this question is work out the coded mean and standard deviation first. So let's start with the coded mean, which would be n bar, which would be the sum of n over n. The sum of n is given in the question as 1.6, and n is the number of packets of sweets, which will be 8. So 1.6 divided by 8, which is 0 0.2. Then for the coded standard deviation, so sigma n. We'll use this formula here. The sum of n squared will be 0 0.5, given in the question. n is 8, the number of packs of sweets. And n bar is the thing we just worked out, 0 0.2. If you work this out of a calculator, you'll get 0 0.15. So these represent the mean and standard deviation of the coded values, but we want the mean and standard deviation of the original values, the number of sweets, s. The data has been coded using this formula here. So if we write out this formula again, and replace the n with n bar and the s with s bar. Then this formula must be true. So right now we know n bar and we want to work out s bar, so let's rearrange this formula. First of all, we'll add 3 to both sides. Then we'll multiply both sides by 10. And we find that s bar is equal to 10 lots of n bar plus 3. But we know n bar because we've worked it out already, it's 0 0.2. So we can substitute that value in. So we need to do 10 lots of 0 0.2 plus 3. And if you work this out, you'll find that s bar is 32. So the original mean number of sweets in a packet s bar is 32 sweets. Now let's work backwards for the standard deviation. Looking at the formula, we know the subtracting 3 will not affect the standard deviation, only the dividing by 10. So the coded standard deviation, sigma n, will be the original standard deviation, sigma s, divided by 10. Now we know the coded standard deviation, that's 0 0.15. So to work out the original standard deviation, we could just multiply both sides by 10. 0 0.15 multiplied by 10 is 1.5. So the original standard deviation, sigma s, equals 1.5. Let's try another example like this one here. 
so this time we have a football club that records the attendance for 10 football matches. The data is coded with this formula, and we've been given this information about x. We need to work out the mean and standard deviation of the attendances, so that will be the original attendances, which is a. We'll do this by first of all working out the mean and standard deviation of the coded values, so we'll work out x bar first, which is the sum of x over n. We've been given the sum of x in the question, that's 224.7, and n will be the number of football matches, which is 10. If you work this out, you end up with 22.47 for x bar. Now let's also work out the coded standard deviation, so sigma x, and we'll use sxx over n. sxx is given in the question 345.8, and n is the number of matches 10. And if you type this into the calculator, you'll end up with 5.88. So this is the mean and standard deviation of the coded values. But we want the mean and standard deviation of the original attendance values, so a. We have the coded formula here, x equals a subtract 27,000 divided by 100. For the mean, we can just write out this formula again and replace x with x bar and a with a bar. So we're trying to find the mean of the attendances a bar, but we know the coded mean x bar. So let's substitute in the coded mean. Now to solve this equation, we can multiply both sides by 100. And if you do 22.47 multiplied by 100, you get 2,247. And then we could add 27,000 to both sides. If you do 2247 plus 27,000, you'll end up with 29,247. So the value of a bar is 29,247. Now for the standard deviation. So in the formula, we know the subtraction of 27,000 won't affect the standard deviation, but dividing by 100 will. So the coded standard deviation, sigma x, will be the original standard deviation, sigma a, divide by 100. We're trying to work out sigma a, and we know sigma x, so we can substitute that into the formula. So sigma x is 5.88, and then we just multiply both sides by 100. And if you do 5.88 multiplied by 100, you end up with 588. So the value of sigma a, the original attendance standard deviation, is 588. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and why not try the exam questions in this video's description.